Yeah, so hello everyone. This is uh, another Armored Commander stream with uh, me, Flori2412, and the developer of this game. We're doing this over Discord, which I guess is not something we've done before. Okay. And we've decided to um, try out a new campaign, the final Desert Rats campaign, Desert Rats Victorious. We're going to... I'm the one playing it, by the way. Um, I'm the one who will get embarrassed uh, first in the stream, and we will. Um, My embarrassment do... happened before we started recording, so luckily. Yes, I um, have to we, share just, that. we just played, um, tried out this campaign with the Churchill, and we got killed by a German mortar attack on the first day. So that is a very good, um, you know, a very good initial sign here. Um, let's see if I can do any better. Yeah, um, can you survive beyond ten thirty in the morning? So the idea of a, of a very short campaign length here is that we will not experience all the events in the campaign because then I guess our tank commander is just not on the front line very often, just occasionally in the action, but we'll see some of this campaign. Um, I'll go for maximum difficulty. If or rather when I die, Sudasana can just take over. That's fine. Oh, nice. A grant. That's not... That's a good start. That's not too bad. All right. Okay. So, so um, this campaign is um, set after the Battle of Alamein, the second Battle of Alamein, to be precise, in November 1942. And we are now chasing the Africa Corps until, basically until we reach the Marath Line in southern Tunisia. And... Um, this, this is a campaign about pursuing and eventually defeating the Africa Corps. Um, but it's, it's not an easy campaign because in 1943, the first Tigers show up. That'll be an issue. Okay, I will go for um, enemy spot at improve recon. But it's probably easier than the, um, the earlier Desert Rat campaign, right? It's definitely easier than the second Desert Rats campaign yeah. because that's the one where uh, the Africa Corps advances through to Libya and Egypt and the, the Desert Rats have to retreat all the time. Um, gymnast. Mm -hmm. And quick reflexes. This is not going to... This doesn't mean that we will survive... Um, a hit in any case because Sudasana just took that as well and then we got killed by the mortar. So there we go. Well, I probably should have closed my hatch. All right. Um, so a, a British M3 will have only AP ammo in the 37 millimeter gun. I still want that accuracy though. Sniper. The loader can take gun maintenance, because I don't want the gun to break down that quickly. This is the... So this is the 75mm gun, the one that is a lot more powerful, actually. And um, the this tank is great because it has a lot of weapons, two guns, three machine guns. Its problem is when you go hold down, this gun is no longer um, capable of firing. So you actually... You know, you, you get rid of your biggest advantage when going all down. So that will be an issue. Are the are hull guns still always blocked when you go hull down? In the you know, um in the direction the H D arrow yeah. shows you, you know. If you are just, um, if you pivot a little bit to the left or right, you can keep shooting right. past the cover and you still have some advantage. Right. That might actually be a good tactic to try out to go hold down, like um, not directly towards mm -hmm. the enemy, but slightly, and then pivot a little bit and fire the 75 millimeter gun. Yeah, I'm just, I'm looking at the code right now. You're exactly right. It's only blocked if you're precisely on the same direction, but even one hextant to the left or right, you still get some protection from incoming attacks. It's not as good. And even coming straight in over hull down, it can, it can still kind of sneak through 
it's not 100% protection all the time, but. Okay, so let's let's go. Make sure to load both both of your guns as well. Absolutely, and I'll take some HE shells as well. I never use the smoke shells. That's fine. Let's do it like this. So maybe I can explain a little bit how I play this game, because there are these things that you do sort of automatically after a while. Um, what I always do before moving into another zone is I um, um, open up my hatches to decrease the ambush risk. Then I check my guns. With the Lee or the Grant, you have to be careful. You have to press Q to switch between the guns and make sure they're both loaded. And then I start planning my moves here. So in this case, I would try to go onto this road. That's it's, that, that's very nice. That's just a truck. Okay. So no no support here. Just attack. I can recon this, get the points very quickly. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm going to move to the left and get this capture objective. Mm, okay. So because this is a tank, presumably, I will load um, AP shells. And I have to only have to press one key now, G, to do this. The 37mm gun has AP shells anyway. Um, for a single tank, I don't really want to request support. I think we'll be fine. Save it for later in the day. Or die on the first encounter. We'll see. Alright. I like to, usually when I don't know what's going on yet, I like to give my driver the drive command. Just so I have the option to move, but I don't have to. And because the gunners and loaders can't really do anything else in this tank, I just give them orders to start, you know, to prepare the guns in case I want to shoot immediately. Okay, this is just an Italian tank. This is um, not a big threat, just a 47mm gun. It will not really be able to pierce our front armor, so I'm just going to pivot and get ready. do it. Okay, fair enough. Now, button up. This is one of the things I do automatically after spotting units. I almost always button up my crew, unless I have a really good reason not to. In this case, I he might, the Italians might fire an HE shell at me, even if it doesn't pierce my armor, it can kill my crew. So I want them to button up right away. And now we can just fire away with both guns. Three points of armor, okay. This is probably already enough, but I'll fire the other gun just in case. I need, okay, there we go. Not quite automatic, but pretty close to it. All right. Mm. Support time. Advancing fire. Unit support. I guess I'll go with artillery here. Or maybe anti-armor support. I'll also call in artillery. I, I feel like that could be a rough encounter. So um, maybe I should explain this now. Because there's an artillery gun here, presumably, and some armored um, vehicles, I've loaded 
some HE shells and some AP shells, just to be ready for both of these threats. Okay. Ah, all right. It's almost disappointing when you've prepared so well and then you don't actually encounter anything. Oh. And then oh, they counterattack. <laughs> and I oh I got a Morris truck for support. That's <laughs> well, it's probably got somebody in it. It's probably transporting okay. something. Um, this is potentially dangerous because in this spot, um, if this is a gun or a tank, it can hit my side armor. Yeah. My side armor is not very strong. I might want to be ready to move. Maybe I can use the truck as a sort of uh, steel shield, shield I guess, a meat shield. Move behind the truck so that it absorbs. Oh. Okay, uh, I've got to tell a story about this vehicle. Okay. This is a flux feeling. And in my last attempt to beat this, uh, at beating this campaign, or at beating the second Desert Rats campaign, I got shredded by a flux feeling uh. uh, firing at me with this. Because um, it's this is a fast firing gun, so it has a lot of um, firepower when it fires in each. An HE shell, which is basically um, a bunch of HE shells. Right. Um, so it has a high uh, firepower rating for each hit. Yes. Okay. I want to button up. Actually, I want to take this thing out straight away. I'm not moving. I'm just firing. Okay, that's that's. That enough. should do it. Yeah. Phew. The portrait looks really nice. I like the. Um... The kind of the camouflage on the side. I'm just going to ignore this. I don't have to fight the anti tank gun. I can move here. Do you think the red line that shows the um, the kind of the front lines between friendly and enemy territory? Do you think it should run over the the edges of the hex rather than kind of one character in? I can't remember why I chose mean, to do mean, it that way. Instead of uh, going like this, you mean like that? Yeah, I can't see your mouse cursor, but I I mean, so that it yeah, would, uh, it would it would overwrite the black dots that form the edges. I think the reason I did it is because then you can't see where rivers are. In, in normal Yes, maps. and you, I think you couldn't see the bridges. Yeah, I okay, so I, I did have a good reason for doing that, okay. Okay, that might be another tank. With uh, tanks in North Africa, you know, when playing the, the Allied forces, it's a 50-50 chance you can have a nice time with an Italian tank, or you can have a very stressful time with a German tank. So let's find out what this is. It's nothing. Okay. All right. That I could go there, but I want to get onto this road if I can. Oh, okay. I'm going this way. Avoid the road. Um, I don't want it to do too much advancing fire because this 75 millimeter gun doesn't have that much ammunition, but I can do a little bit here. All right, I'm going to assume this is infantry and just start shooting straight away. I hope I'm right. Yeah. Okay. German infantry squad. That was easy. Nice. That's okay. Mm. I don't need support for this.
Okay, let's check out this oasis. It would be nice to take it. It could also be quite dangerous to attack it. Oh. Mm. Is it worth it? Well, whoops, no. I didn't want to do that. Okay, what's the alternative? Truck and an artillery gun. Which is okay, I guess. I'll call in some ground support. And I'll load HE shells. That should be okay. Not gonna do advancing fire because I wanna save some HE shells for later. Mm -hmm. You can always resupply, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, with artillery myself. Ah, there we go. Nice. Please. So apparently this thing had a something that looked like a, a um what, what do you call it um a pulpit yeah it, over here with a machine gun that's why they call it priest because the commander would be sitting in this little sort of round structure superstructure on yeah. top yeah the priest and the bishop the bishop looks ridiculous i hope we're going to see one of those <laughs> It's, it's 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 it almost looks like a KV two with a huge mm -hmm. turret structure. Okay, let's just get ready to drive and shoot at the same time. So that's an Italian tank gun, which is still kind of dangerous if it hits our side armor. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse and face this way. Might take a few tries. At but least in the meantime, work. you're moving and you're a lot harder to hit. There we go. This is a good position. All right, the, the, the self-propelled <laughs> artillery gun is, is just charging the anti-tank gun that's Not but it's wise. full down it's full down though okay so maybe it knows yeah. what it's doing maybe and i'll just do because at this range it's all going to be direct fire right so it's just going to fire an he shell right into the at gun yes so um because the 37 millimeter gun only has ap shells i can't actually do anything with this gunner here yet Right. Uh, or in this very moment, I'll just fire the 75 millimeter gun to knock this, to destroy this anti tank gun. Where's it going? Oh, oh, the truck came back on the map. It went yes, off the map. Could. Yeah. They there's there's an that. invisible, there's an invisible ring of hexes where enemies can be. They can exist there, but they can't actually interact. You can't attack them, and they can't attack you. Um, but I've also noticed that um, allied units can fire at this fourth ring of hexes if it's in range, huh. which is okay, I guess, which makes sense. So now the, the Italian anti-tank gun is facing us, but it doesn't matter too much. Even if it hits our hull, um, it has 10 points of penetration. That'll be something like a 2.7% chance to penetrate yeah. the armor. So we should be okay. I'm just going to keep shooting. Actually, I could have also fired the 37mm at the truck. I'm just realizing that. I think this priest has no idea what it's doing. The driver just wants to drive around. All right. So I'm actually going to use 37 millimeter AP shells to take out this truck because I want to conserve my 75 millimeter ammunition for yeah. more dangerous targets. Yeah, that makes sense. Nice shot. 
There we go. You know, the only reason it's not an automatic is that with unarmed, unarmored vehicles, they can just punch right through and keep going, doing, you know, some damage, but not enough to damage to actually disable it. Uh, I don't know about that. Okay, that's just a half track, most likely. Hmm. Two armored cars. Fair enough. Let's just attack them. I'm definitely having a much more relaxing first combat day than you just had in the Churchill. Well, I think you're being a lot more careful than I was, too. Though, to be honest, with that um, mortar... So it was a mortar half-track that killed Sudisana. Um, uh, so, some of these German half-tracks have, um, like, I don't know, 80 millimeter mortars on them. And one of them hit hit the commander and killed him. While that I was out of line of sight, so I couldn't even... That could have attack. happened to me, too. I, w I wouldn't have paid too much attention to this. Um, Actually, there could be... Yeah, you could run into one very easily, right? Okay, so let's see what this is. Let's also get ready to shoot it. Just a truck. Okay. I'm not really expecting to hit the truck here. I'm just firing to acquire the target. And I'm not going to use 75 millimeter shells on this one. Though it's it's the end of the combat day or anyway. Just about yeah. Okay, I'm actually going to get a bit a little closer here. It would be very hard to hit the truck, but I just have to keep trying. Yeah, it's moving, it's in dust, and then with the 37 at that range, it has a, quite a big penalty. My hope is that it will stop, and then these two shots I've taken will give me an accuracy bonus for the next shot. Never mind, now it's even more difficult. <laughs> it's on a mission. I'm going I'm going to get closer. I can use the machine gun at medium range, and that's actually more effective when the when the target is moving and in dust and stuff like that. Right. So that could help here. And this is another little tip for players that might be watching this. Um, every time I move and I'm every time I don't intend to fire the guns, I manage to ready rack. Just um, refill my ammunition. There we go. Coax. Uh, okay. Ooh, close. Oh, pretty, pretty good shot, though. Yeah. It's like it has a destination in mind.
So the reason I'm pivoting here is um, I want to be able to fire the 75 millimeter gun as well. This is it's a whole gun, so I can only shoot at whatever is in front of me. Otherwise, in a situation like this, I would have just rotated the turret to fire at it because that would have been um, more accurate. With the Lee, though, or with the Grand tanks, I always try to face the enemy, even if it's just a truck. So I can use both guns. Ah. Okay. Oh, you have dust around you, so that's affecting the roll. Okay, I've managed to route <laughs> a truck. That's, you, you scared him off. That's uh, that's going to be a what's the most important medal for in the British Army? A Victoria Cross, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You you expect to be awarded one for your gallant gallant behavior today? Yeah, because I routed a German truck. <laughs> yes, that's it's, it's a modest first you know combat day, but at least I'm still alive. And it was an it was an advanced mission too, so shouldn't expect to meet a lot of resistance during a day like that. Okay, my rookies have some have gotten some experience, so I can give my thirty seven millimeter gunner. Um, I guess weak spots against against a panzer, you want to be able to hit the the weak spots. Because otherwise, with the 37 millimeter gun, you won't do very much. That's true. Fast hands is nice. I don't need ammo scrounger. Uh, let's. This this skill um, reduces the fatigue your crew um, accumulates in the desert, so it's quite nice to have. I'll go for weak spots here too. I don't know if I need eye for cover if the the, the strategy of this tank is not to go hold down. So no, maybe it, I should it would be counterproductive pick, if anything. Pick some other things instead. Eye for terrain. And not hitting a mine would also be quite nice, so cautious driver. Ah, yes. Um, so because we chose the minimum length of this campaign, there will be six refits and eight combat days. <laughs> so... Now, the, this is I can show you how I do a refit. I'm going to take two dice, all right? These are three, six, nine, twelve... 15, 18, 21, 24, 26 tank options. I've got a certain dice system that allows me to roll everything from 1 to 36 with a with two dice, giving every single option the same chance. So I'm going to do this. I got a 50. That is a Matilda. I don't want to have a Matilda too if I can also have a Grand One, so I'm not going to pick that. So I always limit myself to one choice, as it was in the original Armored Commander, um, because otherwise I would just keep taking the Sherman too, I guess, or the maybe the Churchill. Do you think this that's way that's how it should be if you have the random tank selection, where? In, in refits, you get an offer of one random model. You don't have to take it, but you only have a choice. Like you just did, it will randomly pick one. And it's either take it or leave it, basically. I think it's okay if you play this game and you just pick the best tank when there's a refit. So I think players should be allowed to do this. This is just the way I do it Yeah. for me personally. So no, um, no Matilda 2. The Matilda 2 is an amazing tank in, in 1940. 1941 perhaps but it at this point in the war it's it's just a huge target for a pack 40 
and it has no serious armament, so I'm not taking that. Okay, Michael Walker was promoted. noting down a bug. It's just a display bug that I need to fix for the future. So, so because because of the minimum, minimum length of this campaign, we are sort of rushing through the events here. Burat, Burat, whatever you pronounce this, was a port on the, I think, Libyan coast, or still is. And um, it the Africa Corps sort of used this as a defensive a position for a few days but not for much longer and i think if i press enter now we will actually skip past this event already yes and now we're moving on to tripolis yeah spearhead mission so how did you skip past it it's because um there are i think 10 combat weeks in total in this campaign. So 10 different events that you can encounter, right. and which may last more than one day, of course. But because we chose an, a campaign length of eight, eight days, two of these events will never show up. Mm -hmm. And some of the others might be skipped as well, depending on how the game um, you know, assigns the combat days. So we might have, maybe we will have more action on, on the Marath line. Right. Or maybe we'll have some action now, but something will inevitably be skipped, which is okay. Yeah, it's just I'd say that the way to rationalize is th this is um, when you choose um, a short campaign length, it just means that your commander isn't the one who was always on the front line, more like a reserve. Yeah, be only being tank. pulled up when when they need uh, reinforcements. Um, wait, who is this? The, the loader for the 75 millimeter gun. Okay. Gymnast and knowledge. All right. So now we can encounter tigers. This is January 1943. This is where things get interesting. Calling in some support here because this might be a German 150 millimeter gun. Yeah. Some of them are really dangerous. Uh, I guess I want some. I always fight artillery with artillery because you can call in infantry too, but they will probably not be able to reach the artillery gun in time before they get shot up, you know? Because they need to get into range. Whereas the artillery has pretty much unlimited range on the board. Okay, priest and a mortar team. It's not too bad. That's an Italian 75 millimeter gun. That's okay, I can fight that. Let's see. This was not intentional. I was trying to go hold down there because I always do it with almost every <laughs> tank in the game. And I just realized the moment I pressed the button that I, the, the moment I pressed the key, that this was not a good idea. Because just, just muscle memory. If I had succeeded, I would have um, deprived myself of the chance to fire the 75mm gun, which is the only thing I can do right now. So, yeah. There we go. This is why they didn't use 
the the Lee and the Grand uh, later on anymore. Well, I think the issue was they hadn't yet developed a way to mount the 75 and the turret and have the turret ring be large enough where it would just like blow itself off basically as soon as you fired it. So it was very much a stopgap. They knew they could mount it in the hull and they needed to deploy it as soon as possible. So they, they went with what they had at the time. All right, okay. It's already routed. This is um, a little funny detail that I noticed a couple of times now. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when a gun crew is routed, they still pivot towards you. I, yeah, I just they don't that. shoot. They don't shoot, but um, it's actually funny because why would they pivot towards you if they can just run away? You know, it won't help them e either way here. Okay, this will be an overkill, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that should do it. I was thinking about about 56 or something like that. I guess uh, maybe some of them missed. Okay, now we just need to hunt down the truck. That's going to be easy. And again, I'm not going to waste 75 millimeter shells on a truck if I can help it. Yeah, just one of these but should be enough. The turret gun will be enough here. Two hits, maybe. Okay. That's it. Okay, this village is hell. This is hell. I'm not going there. Yeah, three medium tanks. A whole panzer convoy, basically. Mm. I'll play it safe here. Just go with the number two for now. So it's either a Fleck 88 or an Italian 20 millimeter gun. Not great That's eyes. the thing about anti-aircraft guns in North Africa. Um, it's either the worst thing you can encounter or the least dangerous thing. I guess I'll go with artillery support here. You could go around too. I mean, it's still early in the day. I mean, actually, the Hamada is not too bad. It's it's terrain that you can traverse fairly quickly. I'll check it out. Yeah, okay. That's a much better option. Yeah, I think the whole mechanic where you can recon and get a, an idea of what's present has really changed the game because it allows you to make deci you know decisions as opposed to just seeing a number and basically not really knowing what to expect ex except the chances of encountering something. Yeah, exactly. That's an AS-42 that just had, has a machine gun. All right, I got it. I do want to follow the road if I can. Okay, that's just a single tank. That's acceptable.
Even better. Remember, the chance I of an encounter increases every time you don't. I know, so it's probably going to be an encounter. Yeah, even though it's a one, it's probably got a pretty substantial chance. So, uh, advancing fire and maybe what's good for AT guns, artillery? Maybe even air, because yes. it's a little higher. Oh, yes, yes. Artillery, yeah. Uh, air support doesn't work too well because more often than not, they don't spot the guns, the pilots, you yeah. know, which makes sense. Okay. Ah, that was already a good call. I'll try going reverse again. So what is it? I'm going to fight it from here because it's pinned. I don't think it's going to hit me. Okay, that's already pretty good. I think your squad mates should be more um, aggressive and active in this update because I've modified the AI activation code a little bit. I think they are. I've already noticed this. You know, um, allied units that are far away from you, they still attack and move. Yeah. And, you know, they don't just stand around. So I think I can take this fortress that doesn't seem too dangerous. Oh, counterattack. Just one. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Though, I shouldn't be laughing about it. It's probably another fast-firing gun, right? So if, if, the, if these guys hit me with HE, they can shred my commander again. Yeah. So I might actually want to go hold down for this one because I don't need the 75mm gun for this. Okay, never mind, just button up, fire. That should do it, right? Yeah. It's not over it's not overkill it. All right. That was one of the units that was left out originally, right? Yeah, that was actually the unit that was missing. Okay. So Excellent. that worked. Nice. Okay. I can just bombard them with 75 millimeter shells. These guys. No reason to get close. Yeah, and I, I don't want to get immobilized by a mine if I can yeah. help it. So the mines in the game are actually more like an anti infantry mines right now because I think there were some anti tank mines in North Africa and. You know, in World War II, 
that just had such a huge explosive um you know force that they could just destroy a tank outright yeah they could they could be much more cruel to the player for the for the time being i think you know the worst that will happen is you'll get immobilized and you may you may have some injuries among your crew but that's about it yeah just you know destroy the tracks and yeah. that's it shake shake up the hull a little bit Oh no. <laughs> Head back to the fortress. <laughs> I <laughs> find another way around. It's probably nothing, but I already exactly know what's going to happen if I move this way. It's gonna be a tiger, right? I'll you know, I'll risk it. Fair so bring enough. in um at least request uh AT support. No, even better, I'll request air support. Yeah. I, I hope that one of these P forties can just take that thing out before yeah. it ever has a chance to fire at me. Just drop a bomb right on the roof. And a, a tiger is a pretty big target, so it should be easy to spot. No, oh, right away. Okay, there was nothing here. And there, it, there it is. It's, it's retreated to the village. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe, Better get Maybe these. they had to refuel. How about instead of a P-40, I want some B-17 flying fortresses and just level that whole village, please? Something like that. I don't think heavy bombers are the kind of thing where you can just call them in on like 15 minutes notice. <laughs> I think they, they need a little bit more time to kind of get organized. Yeah, I know, but... Uh, it would be nice, though. Yeah. Or maybe, um, okay. what's the kind of the medium bomber that they had? The one where it's, it looks like two planes that have been glued together. I think just uh, mosquitoes, perhaps? Something like that? Uh, I think it was an American plane. I can't remember what it was called, though. Um, but it was, it was kind of like a fighter bomber. Like it was intended to fulfill both uh, both roles. That would be nice to have. Okay, so I guess I'll go with air. I I I do want to take the village because this is just three points of resistance. It's it's got six six three points. Yeah. It's it's a it's a nice target, but I'll call in a lot of support this time. So I'm hoping for a six pounder or a six pounder four T because these can actually knock out a tiger with some luck. If it's an anti-tank rifle team against a tiger, <laughs> it'll be, a, it'll be enter entertaining. I think. I, well, maybe from the back. I mean, the side armor isn't that good. No. Maybe you know. Maybe if they climb inside the tank and fire the anti-tank <laughs> rifle at the at the driver's seat from within, they might pierce the armor. It's an anti-tank <laughs> crew rifle. Okay, there was nothing there though. But now the tiger is my nemesis. It's wait. It's some somewhere hiding in the desert. It's just waiting for me. I know. I'm going to run into it eventually. Uh, I'll go with the tank destroyer here. Long range is good. Ah, that's an Italian tank destroyer. Yeah, it's okay. only 75. And it's short-barreled, so it's going to have a tough time hitting you at this range. But at this point in the war, they they had heat ammunition, so oh. I shouldn't underestimate it, but I should be able to take it out. The only really good thing about the Semoventus was they, are, they were pretty small vehicles, so yeah. they are hard to hit. That was their biggest advantage. Now it's moving. Even if I wanted to go hold down, there's there's no nothing to go hold down behind here. Yeah, it's so just flat, featureless terrain. Just gonna keep shooting. Oh, there we go. Not bad at all. Yeah, that was pretty good. 
Very nice. You didn't meet the tiger, but you know, it could be a good thing. Everybody gets a level up. That tiger that was in the village is it's now the villain of this campaign, you know? It's out it's, there somewhere. It's in the background. It's it's um shadowing me and it will eventually make an appearance. Let's go with night lightning reflexes for my commander. Well, one day what I wanted to do is have a not obviously not a multiplayer component, but basically where your tank name and your crew with all of their skills would be uploaded and then it could appear in somebody else's name and somebody else's game as an AI unit. So you might encounter a tank with all of the crew and the, and the skills and everything that somebody else had played through in their own game. And those would be kind of like boss battles because obviously they'd be much more powerful and much more able than your regular run of the mill AI unit. Yeah. At some point it would be nice to have different like experience levels for AI units. So sometimes you would just fight rookies. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, enemies that just take a shot every other turn or so. And sometimes you might run into a really experienced tank crew and they will attack you straight away, you know. Well, Maybe, all, of the AI, you know? all of the AI units have a full crew generated for it, but normally they're newly generated, so they don't have any background or experience or anything. So it would be possible to enable that for them and to allow them to use their skills so they would have an easier time firing at you. They'd be have an easier time moving around, that sort of thing. You know, just as a just as an option, you don't it players don't have to enable it. You know, mm -hmm. but if you want a an even more difficult experience, you could maybe turn on um, occasionally encountering you know more than average experienced enemy crews. All right, um, this is the loader. He doesn't really need any of this. It's not going to be cold in the desert. No. I don't believe it. So you get up his... Grit. Yeah. Um, target tracker. Morale. And for this one, mechanic. It's another spearhead day. Campaign has been the campaign generation has been very gentle so far. I'm sure that will change at some point. The last time I played this, I got killed assaulting the Marath line, and that is quite fitting because that was one of the toughest battles in in 1943 in North Africa. Is that about three quarters of the way through the campaign calendar? Kind of, yeah, kind of. I think March 1943. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is just a half track, most likely. All right. No more bug reports on the Steam discussion board, so that's good. Okay. This is easy. Oh. It survived. That's just a pretty big hole somewhere in this truck now. Yeah. But it's still driving. Has an extra window. I guess if it's an unarmored vehicle, then the sound effect should be different, right? Because rather than bouncing off, it's just kind of flying right through yeah you can that would be a nice opportunity to introduce one of these really terrifying startling sound effects <laughs> like the one machine gun breaks yeah like, like whoosh, i don't know <laughs> the sound of the canvas flapping in the wind is it 
maybe maybe you can ha have someone throw a rock at one of your windows and record that or something if he hits the oh, like window a, really oh, like hard. a glass breaking noise <laughs> yeah maybe okay just an armored car should be easy AT support. Uh, oh, yeah. Ah, I got lucky. The moment I pressed the the enter key, I realized that this is probably an encounter. So this this is pretty much bound to happen. Okay. I'd rather let's see. I'd rather fight some infantry. Yeah, even with the landmines. Okay, this is getting interesting. <laughs> so the game is really building up to something here. The modifier now must be immense. Oh, Pretty this much. is what it was. This is what it was building up to. See, see it. But you you've, see got it? A you've got a friendly the zone. Tiger is back. My friend, the tiger is back, and he's brought a friend. <laughs> <laughs> a little support. I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm going to the village first. Then attack the fortress. Right. It's more reasonable. Let's call in a lot of support here. Because I'm expecting a tough battle. If the thing is, if this anti tank gun is uh, positioned between buildings or in the mm. fortress structure, it will right. be very difficult to take it out. So some artillery would be very welcome here. Nope. I got two mortar teams. Okay. Might want to go hold down for now. All right. haven't spotted anything yet. Yeah, in a fortress zone, there's probably, there's, I mean, there's a lot of this um, stone buildings terrain. So more likely you'll be out of line of sight and less likely you'll spot each other. So is the chance to generate line of sight dynamic based on the, on the zone type? It's based on the terrain of, of, um, of both units. Although, in most cases, you can't see the other terrain, but the game knows what it is, so it takes that into account. Okay. So that's not the anti-tank gun, because it wouldn't move like this. Yeah. It's set light tank, so maybe a Panzer II. Or an L640, an Italian tank. We'll see. All right. Let's just get ready. Oh, yeah. Pack, pack 38. Oh, this is not good. There's one. At least he's out of line of sight for you. I have to stay here. I can't really do anything. If I drive away, it'll just give him a chance to fire at me. I might lose the other squad mate tank. This is bad. Okay. Oh, that was a hit. Nice. That was a good Come hit. On. Yeah, there we All go. All right. Nice.
They don't really seem to know what to do. It's because they haven't spotted the target yet, I guess. Ah, oh, oh, it's just a armored car. It's basically just a car. All right. Still can't see it though. Yeah, those those teams are doing a lot of repositioning. I've got to look into that. I think the idea is they want to establish line of sight. Maybe, I don't know how this works. Maybe they can't establish line of sight because they are actually out of sight, you know, out of out of range. Because well, these are four hexes, so they shouldn't be able to Sp I mean, fire spotting, spotting is... It's is separate from firing, so they should be able to spot a target even if. But you're saying if if the light mortar itself can't reach it, then it doesn't have an attack option, and thus it kind of just defaults to maybe repositioning itself. I think the problem might be that to them, it's like the enemy unit being here, you know, in the black, dark area. Yeah. That's why they keep repositioning. They want to spot something that they cannot spot. They should actually be trying to move closer to it. Yeah, and then firing, even if they don't have line of sight, because it's a ballistic weapon. Okay, anyway, um, I'll be able to finish this one by myself. I'm glad it's pivoting towards me. It's like... That seems like a like an interesting move here. Does it think that it can survive a hit if it just pivots towards me? Like I don't this? know. <laughs> just spinning in place. Okay. Where's <laughs> the tiger? Okay, I'm calling it. This time this time it's gonna be there. I want those bombers. No. No. It evaded you once again. Just a Panzer too. I thought so. Oh, it's... Oh, that's an EHE shell. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh... Grazing hit. Grazing hit. Okay. So we're just... Just stunned. Stunned? We're not dead. That's no. good. But you could have been. That would have, that would have been a sad end to I the I just campaign. got some kind of achievement. And for a moment there, I was thinking the game is probably taunting me right now. <laughs> There's an achievement now for getting killed by a 20 millimeter HD <laughs> shell. Something like that. <laughs> You know, there was this one player who said that the first achievement he got was the one you got almost killed by a sniper. Congratulations. Yeah. Seems fitting. 
but you only get that if you're playing with the player commander. Like the, the permadeath option. Because otherwise, you just replace your commander, right? It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah, but that was a pretty good combat there. It's the, not too much action. Mm -hmm. We took out a pack 38 at least. And we lost, okay, we lost the Grand System. Maybe it wasn't the best combat day ever, but we're still alive. Every battle you can walk away from in this game is a victory. Agreed. So he's got the survival skills now. So I think I'm just going to increase his grit to 5. I prioritize grit because it's the skill that makes wounds uh, less severe in the right. game. Just to increase his survivability a little further. No, I think it's well worth it. 37 millimeter gunner. Oh, yeah, that was the phone call I was expecting. Uh, okay. I'll be back shortly. All right, no problem.